see the mess behind me. This is our family room, craft room. So I didn't have time to clean up. My son's at school. Welcome back to my channel. I am Lil Annabelle, and this is my channel. I like to talk about random stuff. Um, we're trying new formats. I not liking me talking over my art so much, but what I'm going to do hopefully is when I finish my art piece, I will make a shorter condensed video of the art being made. And also, I would like to start um, looking at places to sell my art online for you guys to buy, hopefully. And I've also been focusing on my Instagram. So today, I will be giving my thoughts and opinions on chapter 6 of the Sorcerer's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So where we left off is Harry had the best day of his life. Hagrid came and got him and he discovered the wizarding world. And he discovered he has lots of money from his parents and this bank called Green Gods. He gets his books. He sees all the cool magical stuff. He gets his wand. So now he's back home waiting for school to start. And school starts September 1st. And I think this is kind of a common thing in England. Let me know if you're watching this or ever come across this and you're from England. In America, we like to start in August, right before Labor Day, and then the kids have a 30 day weekend. It doesn't make sense to me. He's treated, I hate to say this, worse than he was prior. Prior, he was treated like dirt of the earth, lower than like bugs, disgusting. Like they were talking to him like he was in the room. Now they're completely ignoring him. Dudley's scared of him. I mean, right now he has a pig's tail. And M2 is not coming in to vacuum his room. Hag Hag his owl Hedwig is coming um, in and out as she pleases, which also a cute thing. He picks out the name Hedwig out of a history book that he had gotten or received, um, like, or read, which to me is very interesting in the fact that in the movies at least Hermione's the smart one. The boys are just kind of broader and like to just goof around and show off their muscles. But you know, he, this shows me that he's intelligent, intrigued by different things. So We'll go more on over this. In the movies, characters are kind of treated a lot differently than they are in the books. Also, no threat to the movies. Characters in books tend to have more depth to them. Harry gets the courage to ask his uncle for a ride to the train station in London. and. His uncle, just being Uncle Vernon, decides that, like, I'm only taking you because we have to take Dudley to the hospital to get his tail removed before he starts school. This is thought. So, the tail is as a result from magic. How are they going to explain this to the surgeon? It's clearly a pig's tail. I don't know if you know this, like, humans have tailbones and sometimes babies are born with a longer tailbone that sticks out a little bit. That's not it. It's clearly a pig's tail. <laughs> I can get removed. And also, when babies are born with this, it's usually removed very early on in their trap, like, like, after they're born. Not at, what, Dudley's 11? <laughs> Harry's also 11. Like, they're not that far apart in age, which is very intriguing how close they are in age. But Uncle Vernon finally gets him to the train station, even like p packs up his buggy and takes him to, and then like gives him a hard time about platform nine three quarters. Like, haha, -ha doesn't exist. This is all fake rubbish, <laughs> whatever. Because they're between platforms nine and 10 and there's a barrier and there's 
no such thing as platform nine and three quarters. And in my head, this boy who's been treated less than, than his whole life, his aunt and uncle, I don't know what they're thinking at all, but they're like, they want to stop the magic out of him because I'm sure Al Amphitude just like is jealous and despises magic now because her sister was a witch and she wasn't. And Uncle Vern just doesn't like anything that's not quote unquote normal in society like box. And yet they hate him so much and I'm like just let the boy go. <laughs> He'll be out of your hair. Who cares if he's learning magic? Like I'm sure he doesn't want to be living with you anymore either. Like, explain that to me. And so I'm sure Harry's thinking this is all a joke. This is still a prank. They're in on it. And so he's just like, and the, he asks a guard first. And the guard laughs at him. Right? And he has a, all this stuff. He has a, a large owl. And <laughs> also, how do you muggle children get onto the platform with their parents like are there special instructions also like it like to me it just makes sense and I don't know if this is true or not like when they have a with someone from the magical world outside like the this barrier kind of like enclosed like not even like blends in right to help you know people get onto the platform especially new students especially those of Muggleborn or in this case Harry might as well be a Muggleborn at this point because he was raised by Muggles so he's just kind of fretting he doesn't know what to do and then a plump woman her five children with her so these are the Weasleys and she's you know, probably like me, hates crowds, avoids them with a living passion. Just, <laughs> like, I don't blame her. She gets on and she's like, complains like, every year it's the same thing, packed with muggles, of course. So this gets Harry ears perked up. Because the term muggles, and he knows this from Hagrid and his brief time spent at Diagon Alley. And so, she, the first boy Percy goes in, and he tries not to blink, and he's gone within a second. And then the twins go, same thing. And then Harry finally gets up the courage to ask her about it, and this Molly Weasley being the sweetest lady probably always had mom energy and it's very kind to him and she gets him and she tells him like oh yeah it's Ron's first time too and all of her children are tall with you know red hair pale and so she's just like all you gotta do is just run towards the plot like between the berries the between nine and ten it's best to be a good running start, especially if you're nervous. And so Harry gets up and he's going, like, walking at a pace. And he starts running and he knows he's going to crash. He knows. And he, like, braces himself. And he's, like, for the crash, he's not going to be able to stop himself now. And then he opens his eye and he finally sees the Scarlet Engine that's going to Hogwarts. So Harry finally gets on the train, he finds a car with no one on it, he struggles, he gets head and he'll be struggling in the, his trunk up, like, in the storage above them. And Fred and George come by and help him, and they, they see the scar, or the glimpse of the scar, and they ask him, and he's like, yeah, I'm Harry Potter. And... So they help him, but Mrs. Weasley being mom, like, I want to say goodbye to all my children, telling the twins not to blow up the toilet. And mom, we never blow up the toilet, but thanks for the idea. She's like, that's not what I meant. It's like, send, 
send an owl when you get home. First you got an owl for being head boy or prefect. I think he's, yeah, prefect. Because they keep saying first to the prefect. Because, you know, the twins were, you know, over it by then in the summer. And the twins are like, Harry Potter's on the train. Mrs. Weasley beans like, He's not an animal at his zoo. Let him live his life. And that's a very kind thing. And then I was like, I was thinking. So she was in Dumbledore's army for the first Wizarding World, right? And so, and I mentioned this in my last video. I always put the we Mr. and Mrs. Weasley the same age as the Potters. But like, if you really think about it, they're not. Ron is Harry's age, and they have boys that are now out of school, so they're prob. And it seems like most wizarding families have children young out of school if they get married, because there is no quote unquote wizarding college that we know of. So they're probably like in their forties or really close to their 40s so they're a good 10 years older than the potters but i'm just thinking i'm like with harry like looking so much like his father with his mother's eyes i wonder if she recognized him but just being mrs weasley didn't want to draw attention to it and so and ron finally finds his way back to harry's car and it you know harry says yeah it goes to down and they get chatter and Ron has smut on his nose and like grumbles like mom packed me a roast beef sandwich she's always busy she, I don't like roast beef but like you know trying to be kind they don't have a lot of money to their name and but Ron, Harry doesn't care like he just came into a bottle of money a month and a half ago roughly right and but you know Harry's still like humbled by it and doesn't care. Ron asked Terry if it's true and so like you know they get talking and Harry's like yeah here's my scar. Which I think Harry like always liked his scar but like you know eggs and we find out that it's because of Voldemort. It's the scar is makes him attached to Voldemort. It's getting around the lunchtime and the food cart comes around and Harry buys the whole lot and they start having fun with the chocolate frogs and the cards that come in the chocolate fro frogs and Harry's just amazed that the, the pictures move. <laughs> so he goes over, I have, he's after Ag Agrippa Tlonley. So. On Double War Car it mentions his partner Nicholas Fumel and Alchemy. And I don't know I was I was roughly the age of Harry when these books came out. Like I grew up along with Harry. Let me know if you're the same way. Um if like you just like to me, like, first reading it, that is not important information. Probably just kind of like, oh, okay, cool. And maybe some of you, like, knew Femel, like, kind of in the history, because I think he was a real, like, alchemist back in the day, like, 1600s or so, if I'm not mistaken. And soon, Harry has Dumbledore, more gang, Hyneses of Woodcroft, Albrecht, Grain, and Sir Mer like all these people, right? That I cannot. So they get to. So Harry looks at this package of Berry Bots, every flavor of beans. And Ron's like, yeah, they really do mean every flavor of bots. Like, you get, like, your peppermint, your chocolate, your marmalade, but you also get like the bad stuff like cooked peas, 
Ron said George sworn he had burger flavor wine, spinach, liver, all those gross things. So it's every flavor, literally every flavor. Ron says I like pulls out the soul dried scabbers, and Ron gives him a spell. Oh no, oh gosh. Hit friend George gives Ron a spell to turn him yellow, and it doesn't work. And I recently saw that the spell doesn't necessarily work because scabbers isn't actually right it's Peter Pettigrew interesting thoughts also we're not here yet but the modern map wouldn't friend George see Peter Pettigrew on the map and also wouldn't that map be very busy with everyone I don't know I have questions about the map now that like I've completely gone down that rabbit hole and we're not even there yet we'll dive deeper into the rap into the Mars map down the hole <laughs> down that way because we're not even there yet Harry doesn't even know about the martyrs or the history or his friend his dad's friends <laughs> he doesn't know much about his family which is just makes me sad Hermione while this is happening comes by is like goes it's like that's not you know that's not a very good spell is it it's like of course I've been practicing you know and everyone's worried about the sorting hat and and just the how that's going the sorting ceremony no one and Neville comes by looking for the toad then Hermione comes by and they haven't seen the toad why isn't the toad in like a cage Anyway, that, that could solve a lot of this plot points, um, unnecessariness. Anyway, <laughs> they go over the houses and Ron's like, she doesn't, they don't want Hermione in the same house that they're in because she's this kind of bossy and being a little bit of a know-all. I don't blame them. Okay, Hermione doesn't come off very kind at first. And I imagine she didn't have a whole lot of friends growing up. She seems odd and pushy, but doesn't know better because her personality. I kind of get that. So, and Ron's like, it's like everyone in my family has been in Gryffindor and all that. So, Ron's going over his brothers and Charlie's and Romani studying dragons. Bill is in Africa working for Green Gods. There's news that someone broke into Gringotts and every time when this happens or they're always worried that it's somehow connected to you know who or Voldemort. And like no one truly kind of believes that Voldemort's fully gone. Which also another thing that floats around is since he's ripped his soul out technically eight times he's not fully human anymore and therefore he can't die we finally meet Jacob Malfoy so the compartment door meets near Neville Hermione it's the boy that Harry recognizes from the shop and he, and so he introduces his friends, Crab and Goyle, and he's also Draco Malfoy. And he recognizes Ron, and like, he's rude, and it's like, you know, it's like, I recognize that the red hair and freckles, you must be a Weasley. My father's told me all about them. Which, gosh, Draco is a very insufferable person. It was probably her intent that he made, she made Draco and Dudley very similar. 
like, you know, Harry grows up with Dudley and Dudley is, like, you know, and all Harry wants to do is get right away from Dudley and all of a sudden he meets this boy that will become his nemesis that's very much like Dudley and he just... So, anyway. <laughs> we are... Um, so, they come by and, like, oh, I heard that, you know, Harry, like, Harry Potter's on the train. We're just coming back to see if it's true. <laughs> Poor Harry's like, yeah, it's true, okay? Like, and Draco's like, all of a sudden wants to be buddies with him and, because he's famous, and it's like, it's like, stick with me, I can tell you from the good and bad and Harry's like no I got it I think I can tell and pretty much tells Draco's off and obviously Draco is not used to that kind of tone because he probably gets his way and he's a mouth boy and people just tend not to you know speak up and get their way. Turns Harry and he's like you don't want to end up like your parents and this kind of you really intrigued. I wonder if they actually tried to recruit Lily and James to the dark side. Star Wars. Um, because it seems like both James Potter and Lily Potter were both very talented and wizardry and witchcraft. And so I just, it makes me curious since that's brought up, um, if the rumors are true, we'll never know. Um, I don't know if J.K. Rowling has ever, um, come out and said it. Um, I wonder if Peter Pettigrew, grew, which I don't think it's true because if they knew Pia Pettigrew was on Voldemort's side, Pia Pettigrew would have never been the secret keeper. Like, Trey Girl sees all the sweets on in the trolley and tries to step in and grab some, and Skyver's just kind of attacks him. Skyver flies against the wall and they check to see Skyver's okay. He's breathing, just seems like he's asleep. And so Hermione comes back, it's like, what's all this childish commotion? You should be getting dressed. I just talked to the conductor. Of course she did. We're gonna be getting to the school soon. Please you should be changing to your um robes and soon announcement comes over and says it'll be Five more minutes till they're in school. So it's a chilly night up in Scotland where Hogwarts resides in the mountains by the lake. So he and there's an announcement saying that leave the luggage. I think leave the luggage on the train. It's going to be taken up to the school very separately. And so they get off the train and Harry sees Hagrid. Hagrid's kind of the giant conducting the first instructing the first years to follow him onto the boats and the boats slide across the lake also I'm going like I think it's suggested that the octopus or I don't even think it's an octopus we don't, we're not sure the sea creature that resides in the black lake climbing the boats over but in the movie that makes sense because I think someone counted there's eight boats in the movie. But it's not mentioned how many boats there actually are in the books. Anyway, this is another thought experiment for everyone out there. And so they finally get and they go through a curtain of ivy and they make their way up and they see a grand old oak door and Hagrid knocks three times to let everyone, and let, you know, the first years 
have arrived. It's very like ceremonial, I think. It's very cool. And also, like, these are eleven year olds. Like, how like cool would that be? Like, your first day of like at a new place at first school. It's, it's very kind of cool and magical. Um, yeah, and so I that's all my thoughts I have for today. I hope we're all doing well. And I would appreciate. Thank you for watching my face again. I appreciate it. Um, try and look at the camera once again. I need to figure this out. Because I have an old school camera that doesn't have a viewfinder, and I have a program that's on my computer that is my viewfinder, so I know like how much time is left, how I appear on camera. So, anyway, anyway, do all the YouTube things. I really appreciate you. Um, follow me on Instagram at lil underscore Anna underscore Bell. It'll be down in the description for life, my take on life. Um, I do, I try to post some crafts on there. A lot of me, um, my takes on parenting, ADHD, and all that. Um, it's more kind of raw than what you see here. Anyway. And that'll be it. I hope you enjoy your day and I will see you next time. Until then, be safe, stay strong. I love you.